Yo, what is going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be doing a 3D text tutorial on Photoshop and Cinema 4D. Now, obviously you're gonna need both of these programs, but the primary uh, program that I'm gonna be using to create this text is going to be in Photoshop. The only reason we are using Cinema 4D is for the 3D aspect. First thing you guys would like to do is boot up your Cinema 4D. It doesn't have to be the R20 version I have. Any Cinema 4D that can render 3D text will work. So quickly guys, what I'm going to do is load up a uh, Lightroom. Basically, if you guys don't know what a Lightroom is, it's literally just a uh, Cinema 4D file that has already set up lights for your text and it uh, controls how everything works, like shadows, um, highlights, everything on your text that's already made. But I'll show you guys how I would go ahead and approach this if I was working from a blank canvas. So first thing I'm going to want to do is go up to Mo Graph and then pick Mo Text. Now from here you guys can just use the move tools and sort of move it around a bit till you find the desired position that you guys like and depending on your lights it will change uh, how your text looks when you preview render it depending on where you place it and where you place your lights. So first thing we want to do is we want to click up there on our mo text then we want to go down the bottom and we want to change this to whatever your text is going to be. I'm just going to quickly make mine all caps. And then just below where it says font, I'm gonna quickly change it. Now, if you guys want the same font that I use, this one is called Brazier Flame. You guys can go into font, type in Brazier Flame and download it, easy as that. Open up Wimra, download it, done. Then once you've done that, come to Cinema 4D and you can do exactly what I'm doing right now. All right, so now that you guys have got your font picked, what you want to do is quickly get a material on now. The material that I'm going to place on is something very simple. It is literally just a random metal texture I got off Google. I slapped it into the color part where it says texture. You can just add any image you want. You change that to the metal texture and then you can blur it where it says uh, blur offset right there or something like that. And then you can just uh, copy the reflection settings I have and that's pretty much all you need to get the same look that I've got. So we're gonna apply that to our text real quick. And then we're gonna actually uh, go down to where it says uh, depth just there. And we're gonna make that a little bit bigger to get a bit more of a 3D extrusion on our text. So I'm gonna move my text around a little bit more now until I've got the desired position that I like. All right, there we go. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do quickly, I'm going to hop out of the camera that I'm in right now just to show you guys what the light setting looks like that I have going on right now. So as you can see here, I just have a bunch of lights that are sitting above my text and one big light in front. If you guys don't know how to put down lights, you basically just go to this little light bulb up here. You can hold left click and then it brings up all the different lights or you can just grab the basic light, move it around like this and just experiment around till you get the desired look that you guys are after. Now if you guys don't know how to preview render, just go to exactly where I'm going right now. I click that and then we'll preview render showing you uh, what your text is going to look like when it's actually rendered finally uh, once you've done everything to it. And then if you like that and you don't like it, you can go back change it. If you do like it, then go to the box just next to it and you can render it. Now before we actually render our text, I'm going to add some slight effects to the text and a little bit of bevel just to give it that really nice look. So if you guys don't know how to apply sort of um, distorting or... Um, text sort of effects you go to this little blue sort of arc look and it brings up all the different ones that you uh, can pick you can pick warp or anything like that we're just going to add some tapier on it so guys make sure that your tapper box is placed around near where your text is and then make sure that the text is above the tapper and that the tapper is connected underneath it and then once you have done that you can just mess around with the settings until you get the desired sort of look that you're after you can copy the exact sort of settings i get which i'll put on the screen now if you have the settings like this in position, it's sort of in the same area I have it, then you'll get the pretty much the exact same look. Now, before we're actually going to render our text, we're going to have to go into our render settings and make it nice and crisp and make sure it's actually going to render properly. So to go into the render settings, you basically go to the one that is right next to the actual render, the one with the little settings cog onto it. Click onto that and that will bring you into the settings. Now once you are in the settings, all you guys want to do is just copy down all of the settings that I have for output, for save, uh, make sure everything is done the exact same and you guys will get pretty much the exact same thing that I'm getting right now. You want to make sure you add your ambient occlusion, you just go down to effects, pick ambient occlusion and get global illumination. Those are the really two ones you only need and then once you have done that you're pretty much set. All right guys, so before we finish it, we're just about to finish the Cinema 4D part. Pretty much what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the caps setting near object, and then we're gonna go into fillet cap, and then we're gonna have one step, and we're gonna change the radius to just 1.5. 
just to give it that little bit um, more of a 3D bevel sort of look to our 3D part. Then we're going to render that and then once that is rendered, you want to go back in to your Cinema 4D and you want to change the depth on your 3D part to make it 2D so that you have a 2D and a 3D render which will make life a hundred times easier when we're in Photoshop. Alrighty guys, so once you have rendered your text, you want to bring that stuff over into Photoshop being your 2D and your 3D render. Now when doing this, also make sure that you have your 2D render always above uh, your 3D render. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. So to start things off, we want to be applying a darker sort of layer style. So uh, I've already got one preset already, but I'm going to show you guys quickly how I made this. Alrighty, so we're going to quickly go into our uh, FX tab and we're going to quickly play around with what we've got. So I have a basic satin on an overlay setting just to uh, give it that sort of inner part uh, that's like glowing white-ish. Then we have our inner shadow that just pretty much uh, goes from the top, creates a little bit of inner depth. And then we've got another inner glow, which is just like a darker sort of one. Not much a glow, more of a shadow, but it just gives it even more depth. And then uh, we'll just down the opacity... Actually, we'll up the opacity a bit and then we'll just chuck the satin around and we'll just play around with this to give it that sort of um, shimmering white sort of look throughout it. And uh, and then we'll just adjust our gradient a little bit more to make it that little bit darker. And yes, that looks very nice. Alrighty, so step two, we're going to quickly grab our 3D render and we're going to chuck some camera raw filter on that. We're going to up the texture to make sure the 3D bevels are really nice up the contrast and then main thing we're going to be upping is the sharpness we want those edges to be looking really 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 nice and quickly before we get rid of our camera roll we're going to quickly change the temperature to just something a little bit cooler to give it that bluish tinge alrighty guys so now what you want to do is go up to your adjustments tab and then grab your gradient maps now you want to be grabbing the blue, red and yellow one just like I have here, blue, red and yellow in that order and then you want to click OK and we're just going to hold ALT and we're going to clip that one onto our 3D. Now already you can see it creates a really cool effect but we're going to go to our blending modes after we quickly rename these 2D and 3D so we don't get mixed up. We go to our blending modes and then we're going to chuck the one on saturation and as you can see you're already sort of uh, getting the look that we are wanting but next what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the gradient map we're going to clip it back on but we're going to grab a different color this time we're going to grab a, a sort of dark blue to light red to gray really light gray and then we're going to change that to luminosity and there we go we've got pretty much the base um, look of what we're going for now this can pretty much be the end of the tutorial if you guys um, are happy with this now I'm just going to show you guys how to create sort of like a nice sort of glow behind it so you guys can just follow that along but pretty much is the end of the video so I hope you guys have enjoyed if you have make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content and leave a comment down below on what you guys want to see in the next video it's been your boy Jordan peace